Okay, part three of the CX500. I'm just going to point the camera down and you won't see my face. We'll look at parts. Um, things are progressing quite well. I have the headlight in and the uh, rear view mirrors on. Now the CX500 kit doesn't give you anything for the inside of the mirrors and there are ejector pin marks in there so the surface isn't the cleanest that you can work with. Um, that's one bit of a disappointment about that. The other thing is remember in part two I told you that the clear part um, had a very good connection to the lens. However, the whole unit has a very, very poor connection to the sphering. Um, it doesn't have a lot of surface area and there's nothing in it to ensure that you get exactly the correct alignment. It must be slightly recessed to the edge of this front fairing. And basically you have to do that by um, holding and adjusting with your finger. Um, so you have to keep pressing it down as the glue dries. Um, I did this, uh, I did this piece black. I still need to do these two black. Um, that's another area where it would have been way nicer if they'd supplied separate parts for those grills inside there. Okay, so the engine is done. It's not, uh, glued into this frame yet, but I've just put it in there loosely for you to see now. So probably tonight I'll be gluing that in. Um, looking quite good. I'm quite happy with the results so far. Um, the rear, this rear wheel and swing arm assembly and shock is done. Um, little bit of hassle getting that right, but not too bad. So that's that's loose at the moment and um, that that will fix on once we put that into the frame. <clears throat> I'm happy with that. Uh, front wheel done and it'll get its discs on. I've just sprayed the metal part of them. Um, these decals I would say are the most difficult thing, not only on this kit, but just about on any kit ever. Um, large decals going over complex surfaces. So I can definitely see why you would end up ruining your kit. Now, if you look there, you're going to see that on the two down surfaces there, I have got crinkling. And I was okay to live with that because that's covered by the seat. So the seat goes on like that. Um, and the reason for that crinkle line is because there's quite a step up here. And to get the decal correct everywhere else, which was the main purpose, um, I was not going to fuss with trying to force that down. I don't know if it's possible if anyone ever builds this kit and manages to not have that problem. Please tell me how. The instruments, of course, very nice, and um, that decal is easy enough. Now, these cartograph decals, as someone pointed out to me, are not, or probably not, designed and the artwork done by cartograph. They just do the, the they just create the actual material and print it. But they didn't design it. So if you get a kit and um, this possibly even is a bit of an example of that. Where the size and shape isn't perfect then that's not Cartograph's problem. That's Tamir's problem. Now these side decals, um, I'm not kidding you if I tell you about one hour per side. Um, because with a lot of decals sold and set 
you need to ensure that it makes it over those uh, complex curves. Um, now, according to the according to the box art, that's roughly the position. But according to pictures of the actual bike, the decal would be more centered. However, the the edge the edge piece matching up there would mean that you'd have an overlap and some to cut off. So for my second model, I will go more of what the actual bike looks like rather than the box art. And I'll see about cutting off a little bit of that decal on the edge. Now my uh, bodywork is not painted white. And decals going onto plastic is far inferior than decals going onto paint. Um, so, for instance, my my instrument decal will will be well seated and not come loose. But for instance, on these edges, it's very easy to actually just touch and lift that because the grip of the decal on the plastic is. Very, very minimal. Tailpiece done. These two decals, very easy. No hassle with them. It'll look nice. Um, I haven't checked and I'm sure they won't actually end up matching up perfectly um, once, once you actually put them on. I'm expecting a bit of a mismatch. Um, okay, this, this was quite a nice little bit. Uh, the the indicators on and the tail light on and of course that big decal now I'm just trying to see if I can get you to catch the in the light so I've put tin foil behind the indicators which when you look straight on at them and you're not going to see that exactly in this in this um, camera view um, they they really look very good. It gives a nice brightness to that. The tail light, however, I went and stuck tin foil on, but because there's an angle, that black plastic angle behind there, um, you're not getting it until you go to about that view. So for my next build, I will correct my mistake there. Well, on the other hand, I'm also pondering whether I should put lights into the next build. Indicators, tail light, headlight. The full works. It's a, it's a kit with a lot of space. You see those those indicators have got lots of space for um, for little LEDs. I'm busy putting on the um, those uh, front indicators. These got their decals on. So that was uh, very nice. No problem there. Um, now I I mentioned previously that I was going to uh, de-chrome the end caps of the um, silencers, but as on the box they were actually chrome onto the black just like that. So I'm actually going to leave that for this build. It's got slightly odd um, silencer caps. Um. So we are getting very close. I think that's about all I can say on this. Um, my rating as far as the build goes is not bad at all. About a 5 out of 10 um, on difficulty. Uh, enjoyable kit, yes, absolutely. Um, decal difficulty, 10, 10. Maximum difficulty. Um... I think that's about it. Uh, I think the end result will look very pleasing, but the second build will obviously be way, way better. Okay, that's it for part three.